What is good, YouTube? It's that one, Camry Guy, back at again with another video for you. We're going to be taking a look at some images I shot with the Sigma 120 to 300 using the Sony A9 with the updated Sigma firmware uh, that was released 1.07. Now, a correction I want to make is something I, I made a video about it, um, stating that there wasn't you're not actually getting 20 frames per second with the adapter. It limits it to 10 frames per second. I had a viewer who pointed that out. So uh, again, I do want to apologize for those of you that uh, I might have misled and it was not the intention, but let's go ahead and continue on. So um, with the Sigma 120-300 f2.8, the reason why it's a really interesting lens is because it's the only fast zoom lens that's available that has an f2.8 aperture. I've had the Sigma 120-300 for like four years now, and it's really kind of the stopgap from me upgrading and, well, not upgrading, but uh, selling off all my Canon gear. That's the only reason why I still have like my 5D Mark IV or Canon 1DC or the 1D Cinema uh, that I use for sports is because of that 120 to 300. And what I found out when I went out and shot some soccer uh, today, I guess when I'm still filming this, is that the performance is actually pretty darn good. Now, it is a daytime shooting, right? The sun, it's, it's out, it's bright. Uh, but the performance, again, I would still keep it at about 85% of native performance of actual Sony glass. So I was very impressed with the overall results that I got. I shot autofocus continuous, lock on AF. I did set it to continuous high, but like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's capping out at 10 frames per second. And then I... Um, I shot in a crop mode for most of these shots you're going to see. So I didn't have an adapter like the 1.4x extender with me, so I couldn't get further reach. So I just cropped, so I'm getting 10, 10, 10 megapixels, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual images and take a look here. All right, so um, the information about what the settings were are on the top right section there. I'm going to go through this quickly because there's a lot of images. So... Um, you know, this is just like recreational type uh, sports. It's not like on a professional league or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. So anyhow, uh, take a look here. What I notice here in this little catch here, uh, notice how the camera is focusing on the guy exactly as I wanted to. Eventually it snaps onto the, the soccer ball. But notice how it quickly jumps back to the guy. And that's going to be a trend you're going to notice with these photos. Um, and especially this one. This was a really good example. Uh, the guy's going through and then it quickly focuses onto the background the guys in the back and then eventually in the next couple frames it kicks back and jumps onto the guy and it's focused back on him i think it might lose it once more yep it does it, it connects to the guy in the back and then it goes back to him pretty quickly it snaps right back on him and i'm still tracking him here again i'm shooting uh quite freely i don't typically i really usually don't shoot this much but I'm just doing it to test autofocus. Here's another example again. Distraction in the background, loses focus, loses focus, and it catches right back, even with the subject in the background. And we're doing okay. It loses focus there for a second. It's back on it again and keeps going. Here's another example here. Keeps track, stays focused. The guy missed the header, but it stayed in focus there. Okay. So they're fighting for the ball. Looks good. Out of focus, and then re snaps back into place. So, like I mentioned earlier, that's the trend you're going to see. Is it enough to distract you is whether it's good enough? Is um, It's up to you. That's really your call. I mean, like I said, I don't shoot in like professional leagues or anything like that. But for what I do, it's, it's, it's more than adequate the way I look at it right now. But uh, overall, it looks like it's doing a solid job. Let's see. Here we go. Some more examples. Okay, this guy's running this way. Again, we're just going through it quickly. Not taking too much time. I can even talk about, while we're doing this, uh, those of you wondering about the Alpha 6500, the performance was not very good. It was okay. Um, I didn't get to shoot too much because I my main focus was the A9 while I was out there and I shot a little bit with it. Okay, this guy goes out of focus and then I'm still holding the button down and it reacquires focus. Keeps going, so that was good. I'm noticing a little bit in and out of focus here while I'm tracking this guy. 
out of focus, goes back into focus, slightly out of focus. So yeah, you're seeing that trend in those images. Again, same scenario here. Um, look at this, it, it hit the folks in the back, I think, right here in this example. Um, but I did catch them again. So those are some little details there. That's gonna need more testing. It's gonna need more testing. This is just, I guess, my you know, our initial look at how well this adapter is working. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results based on what I'm seeing right now. It looks pretty good in my eye. So you're gonna have to assess this on your end if it's something that you need in terms of performance. But right now I'm very happy with it. I I typically don't shoot daytime soccer because I shoot high school soccer. It's usually in the evening for the most part. So it may work well, may not work well. But uh, you can see the images and that's really the proof in the pudding there. So you can see how well it's doing. And even at, at 10 megapixel crop, the images still look really tack sharp when it, when it has the focus on the subject, which looks really good. And we're almost at the end of the images out of focus, back in focus. That's that's the trend. I, that was the same thing I was noticing when I was shooting basketball. There we go. Kept on this guy pretty good. Okay, I think we're almost there. Um, just tracking the back of the player. It kept up, slightly out of focus, went back in focus. All right, so there you have it. Those are the image examples. Hopefully those of you that are that may own already a Sigma 120 to 300 might find some benefit. The Alpha 6500, let me go ahead and jump to those images right now so I can show it to you. For those of you that are curious, I don't think I filtered them out, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look anyway. So this is with the 6500, let's take a look. It's not terrible, but it's not something I would feel, It's in other words, it's, I'm not comfortable with, with the, the hit rate that I was getting with that particular lens. Uh, this did pretty well here, capturing this shot, and then boom, went out of focus. <laughs> so um, that one was a little slow to capture that, trying to acquire focus there. But the hit rate is, again, it's going to be up to you. I only shot like half, half a half with the Alpha 6500, and then... A lot of action wasn't coming my way for where I was at the second half of the game. So I didn't really get to test it out more in there. Those of you that might be curious about the A9 overheating because that was something I brought up before. Uh, did not have any issues. I was using the battery grip on the A9. The funny thing is that the, this is still the 6500 by the way, the A9, the, my camera I was filming with my camera, my phone, to record B-roll. It actually overheated, and then my Atomos Ninja that was recording the screen overheated, and, and I had to shut those things down. But the A9 did not have the overheating indicator turned on, so those are some good signs. Um, but yeah, this was it was about 95 degrees Fahrenheit outdoors when I shot. But yeah, that is the 6500, for those of you wondering. A6000 is kind of similar too. It's focusing, hits uh, target rates a little off here and there, but still pretty good, but not something I would feel super comfortable with. The A9, the Sigma 120-300 right now is very interesting. Again, more testing to be done. If you do have the Sigma 120-300, I think it might be worth updating the firmware to check it out. I think the performance is really good. Uh, like I said, the A9, yes. The other cameras, not so much, unfortunately. But as I said, it, it acts weird. And then I've been doing some tests with the Metabones, the Metabones, not the Speed Booster. I don't have the Speed Booster. I misspoke that last time. I have the Metabones, the EF to E adapter, and I'm finding that the Metabones performs better with autofocus single. So if I'm just doing like single servo with a subject that's not moving, the Metabones does a much better job acquiring focus than the Sigma MC11 adapter, which is really odd. And I'm using the actual Sigma glass, so that Metabones is actually doing better with the Sigma lenses than the actual MC11 adapter, with the exception of this. I actually did shoot 
with the uh, MC11, ad- the Metabones adapter, w- for a little bit, I didn't get a lot of time to shoot with it, but the first take I had, it did not seem to focus very well compared to the MC11 adapter. The MC11 adapter was superior in the sports shooting situation compared to it. But that's all I got for you. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments down below. I can go ahead and answer them if you have any. Or maybe there's some more tests you'd like me to do. I know people are asking about 6500, A6000. I do still have, I'm still working on my other videos for the A6000. I'm just investigating the Sony A9 right now. Other videos will be up later this week with regards to my other cameras. I know some of you are looking out for some more guides and tutorials for the A6000, which will be out soon. Um, again, subscribe if you haven't done so. Like the video if you found it helpful. S- click somewhere else if you want to check out another video. And with that said, I'm your host, Alwyn Camera Guy, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.